As many of us go to airports, keeping bad people out while letting non-threatening people in is a huge challenge for airport security. Is that also causing more racial profiling right now? Some Muslims say yes. One woman even says she was searched and humiliated, all because of an item many Muslim women wear. Here's CNN's Alina Cho. Nadia Hassan is a frequent flyer, so imagine her surprise when she arrived at the security checkpoint at Washington's Dulles International Airport Tuesday. Racial, religious profiling, I'm being singled out um, as, a, uh, as a security threat. The 40-year-old Michigan-born Muslim American headed to Los Angeles says she was singled out for what she calls a humiliating full-body search. When she asked why this was happening, the gentleman uh, who was working there uh, specifically uh, told me that the reason why I'm being put through this type of search is because I'm wearing a headscarf. He actually told me that that's the reason why you are being targeted. She's not alone. On Monday, a Muslim Canadian woman says she was made to feel like a terrorist because she was wearing a headscarf, berated and banned from boarding a flight to the United States, all because of her faith. The Council on American-Islamic Relations calls these textbook cases of profiling. It is uh, violating the law, it is unconstitutional and un-American uh, to single out people because of their uh, religion. U.S. Customs, who handled the Canadian woman's case, would not comment specifically on it. But in a statement to CNN, the TSA says current screening procedures for bulky clothing and headwear have been in place since 2007. That wearing a headscarf doesn't automatically trigger a search. And, quote, in instances where passengers choose not to remove bulky clothing, including headwear, our officers are trained to offer a private screening area and may conduct a pat-down search to clear the individual. Hassan says her pat-down search happened in public in front of her five-year-old daughter and several male TSA agents. She stresses she favors strict security, but not when the screening is selective. Do they even know what they're looking for? You're targeting the innocent people, but yet the bad guys are getting away. So it just makes me wonder. The Council on American Islamic Relations says if the TSA is going to flag women who wear headscarves, what about nuns who wear habits or six who wear turbans? What about them? The TSA says it continues to work closely to provide security protocols that are thorough, effective, and foster respect. Alina Cho, CNN, New York. Right, let's talk a little bit more about the potential for racial profiling of Muslims. Uh, joining us now, Fran Townsend, our CNN national security contributor, a former Homeland Security Advisor for President Bush. It's a sensitive subject. These women don't want to have to take off their scarves in front of a whole lot of other people, especially men. It's not only the hijab, Wolf, it's also the abaya. In Saudi Arabia, women wear the long black cloak, also Iranian women, very uh, religiously observant. And so it is an issue. As you know, you take your jacket off. I take my jacket off when I go through screening. And the TSA has said they have special security screening privacy rooms, but they, you have to ask for that. And so, well, one of the things I think we learned from this is you need to offer that. Screeners are going to have to say they need to go through a special screening procedure. Uh, would they like a privacy, a private area? And offer that. And it's got to be near the screening area, not far away, not a big delay. Should every woman who wears a headscarf be told that you have to go to this private area for screening? No, and I think that's the objection, Wolf. It, it can't be based on merely that a woman's a, 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 an observant Muslim or because she's wearing a hijab, a headscarf. It really needs to be based on some other criteria, whether or not there is some concern that there's a bulkiness about it, that the screening procedures are inadequate. And one has to wonder, as we've talked uh, over the last two weeks about body imaging and body scanning, what the implications of that will be vis-a-vis uh, -vis religious, uh, uh, r religiously observant women and men, uh, and how that, how TSA will anticipate that. It's going to require some sensitivity by these TSA agents who, who work at these airports to deal with this on a, on a more sensitive basis. Exactly right. You, and immediately after September the 11th, TSA and others, law enforcement, went through this sort of cultural awareness training, uh, and they're going to have to be sensitive to it as we uh, change our screening. Procedure. The American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee issued a statement
statement today saying that this, this new requirement for the extra screening for people coming into the United States from these 14 countries, mostly Arab or Muslim countries, uh, is, is, is going uh, to be a, a major affront to 700 million people who live in those countries. This directive targets individuals, including U.S. citizens, traveling from Muslim-majority or Middle Eastern countries with no regard as to whether the passenger poses an individualized threat. Implementation of this policy will result in racial and ethnic profiling. Uh, are they right? Well, I think most people would tell you, well, racial and ethnic profiling is not effective. You, we profile, but it's specifically targeted to the intelligence that we receive. And so what you want to be sure is not, and, and I think the president was trying to address this concern in his statement uh, from the, the East Room, the dining room yesterday. Uh, this is not targeting Muslims. We use the intelligence, and if it, if it tends, takes us in the direction of Arab men or particular, of a particular age group, we have to be clear publicly that it's based on the intelligence, and this is not targeting just Muslims. But, you know, they look at it, these, right. these people in these 14 countries, they say, why us, why not England, the United Kingdom, Richard Reid, the shoe bomber, came from England, or why not Morocco or Jordan, other uh, uh, Arab countries, uh, that uh, potentially could send terrorists out as well. Well, that's right, Wolf, and I think what it's going to require is Secretary Napolitano, John Brennan, and others in, uh, in the government reaching out to people like the Council on American Islamic Relations and other leaders uh, in the Muslim community to get their support, their buy-in, and explain these procedures and targeting to them and get their support, frankly. Fran, thanks very much. Sure. Sensitive issue all around.